Another problem that we have is the Wi-Fi is not working. So what can we do to figure that out? Of course, you know, we can pull up our logs. You can see I have the logs here and going through just trying to figure out what the problem is. And, you know, of course, we're always looking for the E for error uh, or failed, error, stop, um, things like that. Those usually point to some kind of problem. And uh, so if we go through, we're just searching for Wi-Fi HW, Wi-Fi hardware. And we see a lot of like connection refused. We see a lot of um, start monitoring false and it failed to initialize. And we see a lot of these issues as we were working backwards. And all I did was, you know, while it was booted up, I just tried to turn on the Wi-Fi and see what happened. And, you know, it could not reach the interface, you know, um, wireless LAN zero, flags 19, problems like this. There's obviously something wrong, right? You know, because it doesn't work. But there's obviously something wrong here in the logs too. And I think the key one to look at is this right here. It says, failed to open wireless LAN firmware path parameter, no such file or directory. And so um, this is a little bit complicated to explain, but typically when you start up something like your wireless LAN, um, there's, there's typically two parts. There's a kernel module, uh, now, it could either be a module or built-in, and then uh, that needs to get loaded into the kernel, turned on, essentially. And then there's a, um, you know, some firmware that runs the uh, particular device. So firmware is like the drivers that make it work. We've all bought something for our computer before, I'm sure, and you load the CD with some drivers on it, and that's what makes it work. Well, that's exactly what's happening here. So it is trying to open that and it can't, it, it either can't find it or it's not working right. And so um, I did a little bit of digging and I went and looked uh, where it says it's supposed to be. And when I look there, we see that the firmware is there, this binary file right here that's been file is where it needs to be. And the configurations are all where they need to be. So I couldn't understand why it didn't work. And I thought, well, what about the other half? What about modules? And so I went and looked under uh, system lib modules and we find that we have this wireless LAN KO. So when we go to activate the wireless, it turns this on. And so I said, well, what happens if I try to load it manually myself on the phone? And so I do this insmod wireless LAN dot KO. And what we get is a failed to load wireless LAN.ko exec format error. Now, technically, an exec format error means there's a problem with the like a malformed ELF. Okay, that that's what it technically means. But actually, in this case, what it's saying is that the device uh, can't install this kernel object because it's not properly signed by the kernel. So. Um, let's go take a look in our files here. And so what I've got is our default config, okay? Um, you know, for our, um, our, our kernel, our architecture, ARM64 configs, default config. And I'm looking and we see config module signature. So yes, we are requiring a signature before we can load a module. And if we're going to load that module, it has to have the proper signature. And if it doesn't, it's going to uh, refuse to um, let it to be put in. So um, this is a good safety thing. So we're at a crossroads right here. We have two ways to fix this. Um, we could say, uh, well, I guess we have three ways. We could say a signature required to know and change some of these from um, Y to be, you know, commented out with the is not set and say, no, we don't, we don't need that or, or specifically say no. Um, and, and just get rid of module signing. That kind of is a security problem. Um, and I, I don't know that you'd ever really run into a problem with that where somebody somebody would have to actually be on your phone already anyways. 
um, but maybe they could craft something through some kind of an app that would install a kernel module and, uh, and you would fall prey to that if that was a problem. So typically you wanna leave this as yes, you want the kernel to sign them. So the second thing we can do is fix the kernel signature of those modules. For some reason, those modules that were built when I built this kernel did not get signed properly. So that would be a good option as well. But another option we have is uh, actually to find um, the uh, wireless LAN and, uh, and actually not to build it as a module, but have it built into the kernel itself. And we know that um, Prima, where we just were a moment ago, we see this word here, wireless LAN Prima, um, probably going to get us at least in the ballpark. Okay, Qualcomm Athros Prima Wireless LAN module. And so what I did is I just changed um, this right here, this Pronto Wireless LAN was an M for module to make that WLAN.ko file, that kernel object of a module. And instead I changed it to a Y. So I just wanted it built in to the, to the kernel itself. And uh, fortunately, uh, that worked out really well. So now it's built into the kernel, so it doesn't have to worry about loading the module. So, uh, you know, we, uh, we bypass the problem and it's just built into the kernel. Quick, uh, you know, synopsis of built-in versus module, module versus built-in. Um, you know, they made the option to modulize things for a couple of reasons, but the big one being space. Back in the day, Android phones had really, really small. Now, modules exist before Android phones. So I don't want to get confused about that. But they've been using modules on Android phones for a long time because uh, typically the kernel uh, area, the boot partition is usually very small. However, on modern day phones, it's, it's usually 64 megabytes or bigger, and so you have plenty of space. So uh, typically in the past, they used to use modules, so that way they, um, they could save space in the boot partition by putting it into the system partition that you could just load this module when it was time to use it. Um, so uh, on, on the phone that I'm working on, it has a 64 megabyte partition. Our current kernel is only taking up 23 megabytes. So changing this to a yes, I've moved, you know, a whopping maybe, uh, you know, half, less than half of a megabyte worth of data <laughs> into the kernel. And we have lots of space available for that. So by doing this, and then I, I rebuilt it uh, here and uh, flash that to the phone and that now works. So just something to consider if you run into that where, hey, you're looking at the logs, the logs are saying we can't find the firmware path for your wireless device. First thing to check is to make sure that the actual Wi-Fi firmware is where it's supposed to be. And the second thing is to look at kernel modules to see if that's how you fix it. Now, what I didn't talk about is how do we know this is where the firmware for the wireless LAN is? Well, other than the fact that it says firmware wireless LAN on it, that's pretty obvious. But we get that from here in our files. Uh, remember, while we were putting this together, where's my uh, Blue Life one? Here we go. So we see Wi Fi right here. And uh, this Wi Fi has these files in it. So, for one, you can search for this bin file, because that's going to be the firmware. Um, and then you can also, uh, like if you're still not sure, you can search and go through these files. And typically, uh, they'll tell you where it needs to be. Another one is uh, either in the device or the board config file. Uh, typically, in the device file, I think, is where it actually copies over the Wi-Fi uh, stuff. So let's search for Wi-Fi real quick. And yep, right here. So product copy files from the Wi-Fi and you see the um, configs are getting copied over system, et cetera, Wi-Fi. So you know, okay, that's at least a good way to go. But there's more right here where that bin file 
because typically it's some kind of bin file. Here's that bin file right there. Goes to system, etc. firmware, wireless land, Prima, and then the name of the bin file. So that's how you can figure out where it's supposed to be. Go take a look, see if it is there or not. And uh, then you have to check to see if that's where it's supposed to be uh, as far as where the system is looking for it. This is where you're copying it to, but is that where it actually should be at? You have to go through your configuration files like in the Wi-Fi here and figure out where it's looking for it. And, and you'll see it pointing to a path kind of like that. So just something to be aware of. And uh, unfortunately that fix worked out really great for us. Now the Wi-Fi works, you can turn it on, you can turn it off. Uh, and uh, Hotspot actually is working now too. So that worked out really, really great.